Welcome to the Power to Change Today. And you know the purpose of this program is not to impress you with theology and religious sounding words, but my passion is to show you how to connect with the power of God so that you can live the life that you see in the Bible. If we're gonna live like Jesus did, I'll be honest with you, we need the power of God. And Christianity without power is just religion, a man-made set of rules and regulations. But Jesus came for something more, much greater than that. The Bible tells us He wants us experiencing His power, doing good and healing and setting free everyone who is oppressed, everyone who is suffering, everyone we come in contact with. We should be a, a dispenser, a distributor of God's power. You know someone in your life right now that needs the power of God. Well, we are going to experience it in today's program. The very same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is alive inside of every born-again child of God. Jesus said we could do greater works than, than the ones that even He did. Well, gang, the only way we're going to see that come to pass is if we learn to walk in the power of God the way that Jesus did. We need to discover the source of true power. And there's something Jesus understood that became the, the basis for everything you read in the Gospels. All the miracles, all the healings. Everything hinges on one simple, life-changing truth. If you need power, if you want to reignite your walk with God, what you're about to hear will change you forever. What was the source of Jesus' power? I'll show you right now. Watch this. The love of God is what got Jesus through the wilderness. And let's contrast that or let's compare that to what the children of Israel did when they got in the wilderness. Go over with me to Deuteronomy chapter 1 for a moment. Deuteronomy chapter 1. And if this scripture is familiar to you because I've taught you before from it or you've studied it yourself, then you'll be blessed by this nonetheless. Deuteronomy chapter 1. Now Moses was recounting for the children of Israel why that they didn't go into the promised land, why they were stuck in the wilderness for 40 years. Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days and the children of Israel were in the wilderness for 40 years. They got used to that place. You never get used to a place for 40 days, but after 40 years being in the same house, you get used to that house. 40 years after being married to the same person who's married here for 40 years, you start getting used to the same person. For 40 years of having the same habit or addiction, you start getting used to that. And the children of Israel got used to their condition. And they learned to maintain that condition and they learned to stay in that condition and they let their condition confine them and they let their condition define them and they didn't know they didn't break free from what was holding them in the wilderness they got comfortable and satisfied with a wilderness lifestyle where there's no power there's no anointing there's no there, there's there's no uh process it's just all either we make it or we don't. God doesn't want you to live in either we make it or we don't. God wants you to live in you making it better and better all the time and him making it better for you. Amen. But but here in Deuteronomy chapter one, verse 26, notwithstanding, he said, you would not go up, but you rebelled against the commandment of the Lord, your God. You rebelled against God. And you murmured, notice verse 27, and you murmured in your tents. Now, what does the tent represent? Tent represents their homes. He said, man, you guys, you came to the temple and you praised God. But when you got to your tent, you murmured and complained. And, you know, that's really where life has to be lived in the tent. How many know you got a tent when you leave here? Many of you, after you stop at a restaurant, you're going back to your tent. And you might say, oh, I love that brother and I love that sister. And in church, you might say, oh, man, I celebrate that. Woo, hallelujah. Love you, brother. Love you, sister. Call me. 
You might talk good about people in church and you say, oh, the church is great and all oh, the pastor is wonderful and all oh, the people are great. And oh, I love that brother there and I love that sister there. But you get home in your tent and you're like, I can't stand that brother. I can't stand that sister. Can you believe what she was wearing trying to prove she was all that when we know she isn't? In fact, I heard such and such say about now you're what are you doing? Murmuring in the tent. Because it doesn't matter how loud the praises are in the in the temple. What matters is what you're saying in the tent. But why were they like this? There's only one reason that makes us mad at people and angry is that there's something broken in our love walk. It's not because I'm not loving you enough or you're not loving me enough. It's that I'm not realizing how much God loves me enough. And I'm not realizing that the same love that God has for me, he has for you. I can't say God loves me because I got black hair or God loves me because I'm this or because God, God doesn't love me because of any of those things. God loves me because Jesus died for me and demonstrated his love. God loves me because of his character and he loves you because of his character, too. And so I've got to treat you the way that God treats me or the way I believe he loves me unconditionally. I have to believe that he loves you unconditionally, too. So that's why I can't whine about you, complain about you, get mad at you, get angry with you. Um, or, or tell somebody something nasty about you, whether it's true or not. Somebody says, as long as it's truth, Pastor, we can speak all the nasty we want about one another. No, you can't. The Bible says love covers a multitude of sins. We're to cover one another, not expose one another. Cover your brother and expose the devil rather than what a lot of Christians do is they cover the devil and expose their brother. Now, we have to be we have to understand what's going on here. Why is the children? Why are the children of Israel rebelling and why are they mad in their tent? Because verse 27 goes on to say, because you said the Lord hated us. He has brought us out to, out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. Notice that when the children of Israel now, where are the children of Israel when they're saying this? Go down to verse 31. In the wilderness where you have seen that the Lord your God carried you like a man carries his son in all the ways that you went and you came into this place. Yet in this thing, you did not believe the Lord your God. In other words, they were in the wilderness. And when things went bad for them in the wilderness, they said the Lord hates us. Now, notice they went into the wilderness believing the Lord hated them. Jesus went into the wilderness believing the Lord loved him. And you have to make a choice every time you face a trial. Really make the choice before the trial comes. Make the choice now, because every time you face a trial, if this foundation is not secure, if this foundation is not established, you are going to stumble in the wilderness. You're going to turn a 40 day journey in the wilderness into a 40 year lifestyle in the wilderness. And you're going to remain burned and wanting and lacking and stumbling and circling the mountains in the wilderness and wandering for months and years to come. But when you go into the wilderness confident in the love that God has for you, no matter what I face, even if it's something bad, God's going to turn it around. God is going to turn this situation around in my life because he loves me. And Romans chapter eight, verse 28 says, because he loves me and I love him, that even those things that are bad, God will turn them into something good. All things work together for good to those that love God and are called according to his purpose. And how could we ever possibly love God until we first understand he loves us? Amen. Amen. Are you with me still? So I want you to see this, that the love of God, because Jesus believed the love that God had for him, he was able to go into the wilderness, take care of business and get through it into the destiny that God had for him. But when the children of Israel went through the wilderness, they did not believe the love that God had for them. They believed God hated them. And so they stayed in the wilderness. The wrong believing will keep you in wrong living. Wrong believing will keep you in the wrong destination. Wrong believing will keep you from reaching the destiny that God has for you. And they believed a lie about God. He doesn't love us. He hates us. And why did they and, and what happened by them believing that they ended up stranded for 40 years? They strand they were stranded in the wilderness and they couldn't get out. 
And most of them died in that wilderness because of one thing and one thing only. They doubted the, God, the love that God had for them. When the trial came, they doubted. Anybody can say, I know God loves me. But when you face a trial, if you really believe God loves you, then why do you say, where, Lord, where are you now? Or, Lord, why am I going through this? Or, Lord, what have I done wrong? Instead of asking all those questions, you need to stand on that word. Lord, I thank you that you love me. I'm your son or daughter. You're pleased with me. I'm going to continue to believe your promises and I'm going to believe in the love that you have for me. And somehow, some way, I believe that you're going to make a way in the wilderness. You're going to turn this wilderness into a Garden of Eden. You're going to turn this wilderness into the greatest days of my life. You're going to turn this dark night into a morning glory. You're going to turn this bad situation into something good. That's what someone declares when they believe the love that God has for them. When you understand your security in God's love, your identity in your sonship, you'll begin to step into your destiny. The children of Israel were robbed of their destiny because of their own unbelief towards God's love. Jesus stepped into his destiny because he knew God loved him. He faced the temptation with the word of God and he came out in the power of the Holy Spirit and fulfilled his destiny. I wish I had time to break this down for you. But if you look in the genealogies of Scripture, because you wonder, why is the genealogies in there? Why are the genealogies? Have you ever wondered why? Why are the genealogies in the Bible? I, I'm going to go ahead and just say this to you. Why are the genealogies in there? Go over with me quickly. I, I, I'm going to Song of Solomon in just a moment. But I got to show you this. Look at um, Luke chapter three. In Luke chapter four, he's about to go into the wilderness in Luke chapter four. But in Luke chapter three, he goes through the genealogies. Why? Why does this happen? Well, of course, he says in verse 22 of Luke chapter three, after Jesus was baptized, the Holy Ghost ascended in a bodily shape like a dove and a voice came from heaven which said, you are my beloved son and in you I'm well pleased. And then he goes through the gene genealogy and Jesus himself about 30 years of age and he begins to say the son of uh, this guy and the son of this guy and the son of this guy. Now go over with me to look at verse. 38 or if you verse verse 37 as he's finishing, which was the son of Methuselah which was the son of Enoch, which was the son of Jared. Lost a lot of weight at Subway, which was the son of. Malaleel, which was the son of Canaan, verse 38, which was the son of Enoch, which was the or Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son. Of who? So Jesus hears about God's love. That's divine security. And then God confirms Jesus identity. Which is divine identity. And then Jesus steps into his destiny. And what does this mean? Why do I show you that? Because in all the genealogies. He, this Jesus was the son of this and the son of this and the son of this and the son of this. And he goes through all of these generations and he comes to verse 38 and he said, Jesus was the son of God. Now, knowing that you're the son of God, you can handle when a voice comes to you and says, if you are the son of God, turn these stones into bread. Jesus has just heard or it's just recorded in Scripture, the genealogy of Jesus written to us as an example for us so that we would know. Jesus had no question about his identity. He no longer saw himself as the son of Mary and the son of Joseph. Because as the son of Mary and the son of Joseph, you can't handle the wilderness. But as the son of God, you can handle anything that the devil brings your way. And you have to have that same thing happen in your life where you realize, yes, physically, I'm the son of this or the daughter of this person. But ultimately, by decree of God, I am a son or a daughter of God. And that's why I'm going to be able to fulfill my destiny. Amen.
Now go over to Song of Solomon. I wanted to throw that in there because I might never get a chance to, to share that with you again. And I want to make sure that you heard that. Song of Solomon, right after the book of Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and then the Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 5. Who is this that comes up from the wilderness leaning upon her beloved? Now, there's a lot of great truth after this part of the verse, but I want to focus on the first part of this verse. He's asking the question, who is this that comes up from the wilderness? In other words, he's about to describe the characteristic of the one who doesn't stay in the wilderness, but comes up out of the wilderness. Now, we as Christians, we all go through trials. We all go through tests. We all go through wildernesses. But here's the question. Who's coming out? Are you going to stay in that wilderness for 40 years like the children of Israel? Or are you going to come out of that wilderness and come up from that wilderness like Jesus did? And the Bible says, here's the distinction. Who is the one that comes up from the wilderness? The one who is leaning upon her beloved, leaning upon her beloved, leaning upon her what? Her beloved. This is talking about uh, the, the Solomon's wife, Solomon's bride and Solomon, the beloved. But it's a picture of Jesus as the beloved and us as the bride. And so Jesus is telling us or God is telling us here, do you want to come up out of the wilderness? You got to be leaning on the beloved to get out of the wilderness. The way to get out of the wilderness is to know that you're his beloved and to lean on that truth that you are the beloved of God. You are loved by God. And when you lean on that, when you feel tempted and tested and tried and like God has left you and people have left you, yet you lean on the fact that I am still his beloved. It doesn't matter what I feel. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what I'm going through. I am leaning on my beloved and I'm getting out of this wilderness experience. That's what he's talking about here. Jesus leaned on his beloved, which was the father. And that got him through the wilderness. And this woman representing we as Christians, us as Christians, is leaning upon her beloved, representing Jesus. And now go over to John chapter 13 for a moment. John chapter 13. And look at verse. John chapter 13, verse 20, 21, when Jesus had said this, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, one of you is going to betray me. And the disciples looked at one another, not knowing who he was talking about. Now there was leaning, verse 23, now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom, one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. Whoa, wait a second here now. Do you see some common language here? Do you see some parallels here, gang? Jesus is talking about some one of you is going to betray me. And you know what? There are a lot of Christians that betray the Lord all the time. It doesn't mean they lose their salvation. That's between them and God and all of that. We can talk about that another time. I'm talking about we simply betray in our faith and we betray in our in our in, in our belief. We betray in in not following through with what we know to be true. And we betray our walk with God because we're afraid of people and losing their pleasure and losing their approval or missing out on their approval or afraid of their disapproval and all of those reasons why we betray the Lord and we're afraid of people. We're people pleasers sometimes rather than God pleasers. And John is showing us or the Bible is indicating for us how to be free from from that and how to stay true to God and notice the similarity between, first of all, Jesus goes into the wilderness with God telling him, you're my beloved and in you I'm well pleased and you're my son. And the, the woman in Song of Solomon, she's leaning on her beloved, so she's getting out of the wilderness. And now these disciples are about to go through the wilderness when Jesus is betrayed by Judas and, the, and Jesus is offered up for sins and all the disciples flee except one. Which one? is the only one that doesn't flee from Jesus, the one who is leaning on his beloved. Oh, I, does anybody see this here today? The only one that doesn't betray and the only one that doesn't flee when Jesus is in his midnight hour was the one who had leaned 
upon his beloved. It was John. You see, John believed in the love that God had for him. And so in times of testing, John was leaning on his beloved. In times of trial, John was leaning on his beloved. In times of difficulty, John was leaning on his beloved. Folks, think about some of the characteristics of John. He's the disciple who knew, who knew Jesus loved him. He loved all of his disciples, but John knew he loved him. Think about this characteristic of John. In the darkest night, John could go to Jesus to find answers because even Peter said, remember it was Peter that said in verse 20. For Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him and said, ask him who's going to betray him. Who's he talking about? Why doesn't Peter ask him? Because Peter's still questioning God's love for him. Why does he say, John, you ask him? Because he knows John knows he'll get an answer from Jesus. Why? Because John has made a lifestyle of leaning upon his beloved. And when you make a lifestyle of leaning upon your beloved, you're going to know what's up when nobody else knows what's up. You're going to know you're going to know the secrets of the Lord when everybody else is still confused in the wilderness, wondering what's the big secret. Well, the children of Israel spent 40 years wandering in the wilderness. Are you ready to put an end to your wandering in the wilderness? Why did they die in the wilderness? Why did they suffer in the wilderness? Well, they simply did not have a revelation of God's love for them. They thought God was bringing them into the wilderness to die. But in contrast, Jesus went into the wilderness knowing that the Father loved him, knowing that he was approved. And that's what got him through the wilderness. That's what's going to get you through whatever wilderness you're facing right now. Maybe you're facing a financial wilderness, the wilderness in your finances. You just can't make it through. You can't, you, you're, maybe you're in a wilderness in your health, in your emotions, in your relationships. Whatever you're going through right now, knowing God's love, a revelation of God's love is what brought Jesus through the wilderness and launched him into, into the the power of God, and it launched him into his destiny. He understood his identity. He knew he was loved, and he knew he was the son of God. And God wants us to know that we're loved and that we too are sons and daughters of God through Jesus Christ. When we understand our identity, that is what produces our destiny. Well, today, I want to make available to you what will transform your life forever. As we learn about a revelation of love, that's what gives us our identity. When Jesus when he knew his identity, he fulfilled his destiny. God wants you to fulfill your destiny. It happens when you know your identity. Our identity carries the, the DNA. The future of our destiny is, con is, is contained in our identity. When you don't understand who you really are, that you're loved and that you're a son or daughter of God, then the devil and life circumstances will give you an identity of defeat, rejection, inferiority, which are all lies for a child of God. Let me help you understand who you are in Christ. When you know that, that revolutionizes how you see yourself and it empowers you to come out of your wilderness and fulfill your God-given destiny. So every Christian should get these foundational truths in this message that I want to make this series available for any gift amount that you sow today identity, understanding your identity in Christ. That's what releases you into your destiny. And in it, you'll experience the love of God. And for your generous gift of $35 or more, I'll also include this incredible teaching on the unfailing love of God. I am amazed to hear from so many Christians who really don't understand the love of God for them. When you don't know God's love, you'll be stuck in the wilderness. Get this teaching today. My announcer is coming to tell you more about this special offer. You can begin to experience God's power, God's destiny, God's purpose for your life. And I'll be right back with a promise from God's word. Watch this. Have you lost your way in life? Do you feel stranded and alone? 
Let Pastor Gregory Dickow give you the tools you need to navigate the wilderness and find your way again. You're ready to face whatever life brings, whatever trials bring, whatever comes your way, you're ready to handle it, you're ready to overcome it, because you know you've heard those words, you are my beloved son, you are my beloved daughter. In his brand new CD series, Identity, you'll discover what it really means to be a new creation in Christ and how to see yourself as God does. You don't have to be defined by your circumstance or the mistakes of your past. Let the Word light your way and lead you to the life of blessing and prosperity God has for you. And to further guide you on your journey, Pastor Dickow wants to equip you with the CD series, The Unfailing Love of God, in which he reveals how to tap into the unstoppable, undeniable love of God. God's love for you is greater than your circumstance, greater than your sickness, your need, or any struggle you face. Your destiny is guaranteed because God's love never fails. Both series are yours with your gift of $35 or more. Or call now and receive the Identity CD series with your gift of any amount. Don't wander the wilderness alone. Call now, get these great resources, and get back on the path to destiny. Well, it's time to have a revelation of God's love. When you have a revelation of His love, it produces the proper identity. It reveals to you who you really are. You fulfill the destiny God has for you. Experience the power of God that He has for you. The power to overcome every circumstance and every obstacle you're facing right now. Today's promise is from 1 John chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. And he says this, In this, the love of God was manifested towards us, that God has sent His only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through Him. And in this is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the substitution for our sins. Gang, Jesus has paid the price for you. You are God's beloved. He approves of you. Now pick up the phone and call. Get this special collection of teaching. Don't miss our next broadcast. You'll never be the same again. I can't wait to see you then. Both series are yours with your gift of $35 or more. Or call now and receive the Identity CD series with your gift of any amount. Don't wander the wilderness alone. Call now, get these great resources, and get back on the path to destiny. It is Gregory Dickow's passion to bring the life-changing message of God's love, God's grace, and God's power to this generation and the generations to come. If you would like to invite Gregory Dickow to minister at your church or upcoming conference or seminar, please call 888-849-5433 or visit our website. If you are ever in the Chicagoland area, we want to invite you to join us for a powerful church service at one of our campuses. Our beautiful Northwest Suburb campus is conveniently located on the northwest corner of I-90 and Beverly Road in Hoffman Estates. Or join us at our downtown Chicago campus located at Whitney Young High School on the corner of Jackson and Loomis. For service times or more information, visit LifeChangersChurch.com.